They look lovely. Yes, gorgeous, wow. So the idea for our farm shop was that we really felt that our farm needed to continue farming, but also I think there was um, a lot of connection with how people shop and how people purchase meat in particular, and that connection of where your food comes from. Um, that was something that I felt really strongly about. We had a great opportunity with our farm and our land and our, our farming heritage and expertise. Um, so the farm shop really came about with a sort of a clashing of two passions of food and farming. Come on. Here at Hartley Farm, we keep traditional breeds and, and, and mainly the, um, the, the Herefords and the Angus. Uh, they, they've evolved, and particularly in the Aberdeen Angus, has evolved in the Scottish Highlands, and they're almost, they are grazing animals that, uh, that have scavenged on the hillsides, and uh, therefore they're traditionally slower growing. Perhaps not the most efficient animal to produce for, from, a, from a farming point of view, but because we have this direct contact with our customer, we feel that um, we want to produce something which we know will, will back up what we we actually preach here at Hartley Farm and that's quality and uh, we know that will produce that so that's that's why we use those animals. With our, with our farm shop what we're able to do is offer a traditional butcher's counter. We're able to offer all the cuts from a complete carcass so whether it be from the offal or a particular type of steak, we can hang it our own way. And also you can come in and speak to a butcher who's trained and, and knowledgeable. With something like that. And you know exactly what you'll be getting. So our, our main emphasis is on quality and also locality. Our deli counter is, uh, is full of local cheeses and also, most importantly, our local homemade selection from, from pork pies and sausage rolls to meat pies and, and salads and tartlets and, uh, and these are really what our, our pride and joy. Our pork pies are it's a traditional recipe from one of our butchers, Ted, who's been a, who's been a butcher for 40 to 50 years, uh, handed us his recipe and it's one of the most popular lines in the shop and also at our local farmers markets as well. Um, no one can quite get enough of our pork pies. I think if I was describing Hartley Farm to someone, I'd say there's this really cool farm where I have my little business and they're really supportive of me and they're really passionate about local food, fresh food, tasty food, sustainable food. It's very different from what you'd find on the high street where they kind of rush you in and out. Um, the idea is that you, you, know, you come here and spend some time here and relax a bit and enjoy the whole foodie experience. We were delighted that Kate joined us. Um, she was able to bring with her all of this expertise and it, it's very rewarding to see Kate coming in, covered in mud on a, on a frosty morning, coming in and delivering some fantastic fruit and veg to the back door of our kitchen. So this is the beauty of growing on site at Hartley Farm. I've just picked a load of produce and I'm now gonna go all of the whole distance of about 20 yards to the farm kitchen and the shop and drop some stuff off. Thank you very much. Hi. What have we got? Uh, we've got some nasturtiums, microbes, lettuce, pea shoots, rocket and nasturtium leaves. All right? Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. So our kitchen has is, is grown tremendously in the last couple of years and, and uh, it's ever since we've been able to take our, 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 our produce from the farms and make them into our own products that we sell through the farm shop and also through, through the cafe. We've got a great team of chefs who take produce daily from, from our fields um, and cook with it and serve it up in our cafe every day. Uh, two bacon mushroom sandwiches and a sausage sandwich and a bacon sandwich. What is that? Uh, just come in, yes. Okay, service ready tonight. Of course they are.
few times a year we'll have two or three events where we'll have farm open days and we get our tractor and, and trailer out and we'll um, we'll load up and with all, all the, the kids and, and take them around the farm and we'll get an opportunity to see the whole farm operation. <laughs> It's interesting because our farm tours are not just a tractor ride. Um, people are genuinely interested in what we're trying to do and, and, and we feel, you know, that it's nice to have that dialogue with them and um, I always thought it would be a problem with children running about but they don't. They sit there and they listen to every word that we have to say and they're fascinated to hear about how we run the farm and, and obviously a lot of it is, is, is news to them, is, is an education to them and so I think that's part of what we're trying to do. We want our customers to know us and to trust us. We've got about 200 egg laying chickens, we only keep egg laying chickens here um, and they are uh, an Isa Brown which is a commercial breed. Um, they're, they're fed on a, a, a non-GM cereal based diet, um, all using yeah, English, uh, English wheat and English crops. <laughs> all our eggs get collected twice a day. They find their way into the farm shop and also into our farm kitchen to make our, our tarts and our, our pastries and, uh, as well as our cakes. And uh, we, can't, we can't get enough of them and, ne and neither can our customers. Okay, this is our, uh, our grass. Um, this is very much part of our, uh, our sustainable farming policy. Uh, the, grass has, the grassland has a mixture of, of, of traditional grass species and clover. Clover is the three-leaf um, plant you see here. Clover has a, a fantastic property. It's called nitrogen fixation, where it takes nitrogen from the atmosphere uh, and uh, absorbs it and transports it down into the soil. So, so basically, our grassland uh, re-fertilizes itself. We have no need for any um, chemicals, uh, artificial fertilizers or chemicals to actually make our grass grow. It produces its own nutrients from the soil and also the natural nutrients that the animals leave behind. But um, so you'll see and it grows at different times of the year so the, the grass species come earlier on in the summer, uh, the clovers come later. So it gives us a nice even spread of grass over the whole year. Uh, we think it makes a much healthier animal so that's, that's the, our grass policy, our grassland policy, um, and we think it's very much part and parcel of everything we do here at Hartley Farm. Our lambs uh, and the sheep are farmed by my uncle Steve um, at Church Farm, which is the farm that borders, borders Hartley Farm. Um, he keeps about 200 clean ewes, which is a Welsh breed. They grow, they grow quite fast, but not commercially fast. Um, and again, they lamb at about sort of uh, February, March time, and they'll lamb for about a month. And their lambs will continue to grow and be ready for the shop from about June throughout the rest of the year. Gloucester Old Spot pigs. We use the Gloucester Old Spot, it's a very sort of traditional breed. Um, it's not quite so fast growing as the, as the modern hybrids, but it's a, a great flavour. A little bit more fat on the carcass, which makes it fantastic for the butcher. But, uh, and these little piglets are about three weeks old. I think um, the two sides have got uh, 18 little piglets between them. That diet is, um, is, is mainly a cereal based diet. Um, we always use the um, uh, ge genetically modified free cereals, um, uh, but it's a cereal, cereal based diet with a little bit of uh, soy or something to add a protein. They do suit our purpose very well. They love the outdoor life, they're great characters, they have lots of piglets, uh, and although they're not quite so efficient meat producers as some of the modern hybrids, um, 
our shop is all about traditional quality uh, and that's what that's what leads to give us an abundance so we've chosen the gloss roll spots but, uh, and they're great characters yeah they're a great shop shop window for us key with what Hartley Farm is today is we wanted to put the farm back into the centre of the community. Basically people wanted land to grow so we decided to put a strip of land to one side and, and uh, the response was overwhelming. We wanted to actually practice what we preach and say to, to our, our, our local sort of uh, neighbours and friends and customers, we wanted to say to them, you know, if you'd like to grow your own vegetables, we can, we can make that possible for you. And so in a way, it was a, it was a way of sort of thanking our customers for, for the support they're giving us and say, come and join us. And, uh, and it's been fun. They've all had a lot of fun and we've enjoyed doing it with them. So. Dry stone waller is a very rare trade these days. Uh, we were lucky enough to have Tony, uh, who lives down in, the, down in the village, and ask if he could spend his spare time restoring um, a dry stone wall. So I said, well, I'll come and do the job for you, okay? I haven't, well, I've been doing this. And I just say to them, I said, well, look, I'll do it. If you're happy, I'll nominate a charity and you give something to them. <laughs> this is it landed on my finger. The dry stone walls themselves are a huge part of the history and the, the fabric of this, of this local area. You know, those themselves are habitats for wildlife and, and it's important that they're, they're kept in good order. We've put in 200 solar panels and uh, we calculate that that will produce for us uh, on nice hot sunny days like this about 50 kilowatts of electricity. As the sun comes out, our shop gets busy as our customers look to come up and, uh, and use the shop and use our cafe. And also our cold rooms, our electrically operated cold rooms get very busy as staff are going in and out them all day and they have to work overtime to keep all the produce nice and cold. So, so this works great. As the sun comes out, the shop gets busier and we start producing a lot of our own electricity. So that works really well. It's all positioned on top of one of our livestock buildings. This is one of the buildings here. Uh, where all the cows and the pigs come in for spend the winter months. So it's made a, a good use of a, of a rooftop which wasn't otherwise uh, doing anything uh, and it completes the circle again. Highly recommend it. Whenever we have visitors, particularly from abroad, we bring them over either for a brunch or a lunch. I like to buy the eggs because I like to see where my eggs are coming from and you can actually see the chickens here. Um, it's really nice actually because it's really pleasant and uh, here in winter as well as in summer um, we think it's wonderful. And I find that it's the sort of place that you can establish a real sort of personal rapport um, and not only that but you get good produce, um, fresh produce, you know where it comes from uh, and you're supporting all the sort of local uh, farming communities. We like the atmosphere, the friendly atmosphere and the fact that it's full of local people and widely used. So we come here because we know exactly where all the meat comes from. They can tell you by, the, by which field it grew up on, which I think is wonderful. You, yeah, this is, our, this is our community centre, I think. <laughs>